So <laughs> coaching it doesn't have to be somebody telling you what to do. No. It can be yeah, somebody who's providing you with the environment to, to, yeah. to learn, knowing what to manipulate. For, for the level of golfer that you're wanting, uh, working with. Welcome, we are just outside St. Andrews on our way to a constraints-based workshop with Peter Arnott and Graham McDowell. Really looking forward to this. Uh, I was just at their presentation at the World Scientific Congress of Golf where they're talking about their project um, with the Scottish golf. They're, they're looking at how do you get people to perform really well from the amateur to the pro uh, level. So we're gonna dive into this and see what constraint-based coaching is all about. Task finished if you manage to get through three further holes, at least still 10 under. Okay? Um, if you take a three at any point, the, the score resets itself to zero and you go back to the start. Okay? So if you get to nine under, take three to get down, the whole thing starts again at, at zero. Uh, unless you've chipped in at any point and that buys you a little um, lifeline. So you allow one three. Okay, so if you've chipped in, you've bought yourself a little, a little credit there. Is everybody happy with minus 10 as a, as a figure out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that's a reasonable challenge point. Is there any emotional stuff going on here that you can relate to the real game? Uh, yeah, I'm getting frustrated because it's like it's like being playing a tournament when you're not really in contention. Yeah. Like I thought, if you just make the cut in a tournament, maybe. Yeah. You're not in contention. You almost kind of go through the motions a lot of that. Okay. Which is what's happening because nobody's really got going. When you're just going through the motions. Okay. So there is some recognisable emotional stuff going on. Ah, yeah. uh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So well, it's just the disappointment and the frustration. So. Yeah. And dealing that in large doses because we're not. Yeah. Moving on, you're getting it every hole. You're not getting excited, but we're doing yeah. it. We're, we're failing quite a lot to yeah, yeah. get the putts. The, the, the intensity looks good, I think. It looks like, you know, when you watch these guys, do they look like they're standing over a putt in a tournament? Ah, yeah, have the same. The there, eh? It looks the same, doesn't it? Which is what we're trying to create. <laughs> We have different holes here. This is the water barrier you gotta hit over. Can't hit a hit a cone unless you add a stroke. Different holes. The purpose of the game was well, the game was a short game area. The purpose of the game was to create pressure, create decision making and create tactical awareness uh, and we actually put some constraints in there that changed movement. We, we've moved them towards uh, hitting higher shots or uh, a much tighter space or there was force carries in water. Uh, the first green was a, it was a team game and the first green was a, there were six holes and it was really chaotic so there was a lot of movement out uh, there and we purposely designed that game like that uh, so that there's uh, there, there, there's lots of movement and the, the guys have to get used to that. We set a, a score for the guys, so it was uh, four under par. Uh, every time the team got a bogey, so the, each par was a three, the team got a bogey, they had to put money in the pot, but the whole team had to put money in the pot. So, so if you were doing poorly in that hole, uh, you could potentially cost your team money. Uh, if they got to the four under number, there was uh, a, another green set up where they, 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 they moved to 
and they had to get up and down, so Parr changed the two there and had to get up and down for two holes in a row, uh, the whole team did. If they got a three in any part of that, that, that green, they immediately st uh, stopped the game, that was it over, and they started again. And the team that completed the task in the yellow zone collected the money. And Cordy won the money. <laughs> <laughs> I would never go and practice and hit as many wedges and putts as what I have today. Yeah. If I was just going to practice my chipping and putting, yeah, yeah, I'd go for an hour. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah. Okay. And tops like, I mean, more in that yeah. time as well. Used to the way I used to practice, if I was going to chip and putt, I'd go for an hour and I'd maybe hit 50 or 60 pitches and 40 or 50 putts, and then yeah. go play golf or go home or whatever. Yeah. But here we've been here, so we've been doing it since yeah. half nine this morning. So yeah. 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 How, how many putts and chips? It's all relevant today. as well. It's yeah. all under pressure, all under. You know, yeah, you are trying to with every shot you hit, you're taking in. You might not realise it, but with every shot you hit, you are taking in information. Yeah. Like. You want so <laughs> coaching it doesn't have to be somebody telling you what to do. No. It can be yeah. somebody who's providing you with the environment to, to, yeah. to learn. Course designing. Yeah. Yeah. Managing well, the learn, environment. I think it's you call totally, it. So it's totally environment providing management. Yeah, yeah. yeah, providing the constraints, knowing what to manipulate. For, for the level of golfer that you're worrying, uh, working with. I guess it must be more, or it'll stick more and more powerful if you've learned it yourself rather than just taking it right on board as this is what I have to yeah. do. If you've yeah. worked out yourself, then you're, it's going to stick better. Yeah, because yeah. you're going to own that change. Yeah, that might not be the same, so if it's the same shot or something we've learned, he might have learned to do it or worked out a different way to do it to me. Yeah. But they just learned it different ways, but it does the same result. Yeah. yeah. Thoughts on What is the biggest takeaway today? I think the biggest takeaway for me anyways is, is the practical part of this I mean um, being able to, to structure the, the games uh, in a way so that it, it, it doesn't get over complicated um, uh, really really struck me as, as being the, the biggest gain from today um, yeah what's your thoughts on constraint based coaching in general, I mean, in general, I like the idea of this ecological way of learning and um, and trying to um, challenge uh, people on every aspect of, of what we experience uh, on the golf course, as opposed to this closed environment on the range where you just get taught to do a certain movement or whatever. So uh, I like this wholeness of. of uh, of the approach, yeah. Constraint-based coaching, something more people should, should look into? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, also, uh, with, I think with, with the way that these guys are going and, and I hear them talking about um, being able to use this in, in, in technical, um, in, in the technical uh, learning environment as well, uh, putting constraints on the on the way you, you learn how to swing a golf club even um, just makes perfect sense and um, yeah so so I think we've only probably scratched the surface of what this can do it feels like that and, and uh, it feels like there's a lot more room to be covered uh, in order to <laughs> get, in, get, get in the goal. What a fantastic day out learning about constraint-based coaching it was uh, we did a little bit of the theory behind it, learning the science behind it, and then going out, having an experience with it, seeing how it's working with players. Uh, Graham and Pete are just doing a fantastic job with this. Uh, it was a great, 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 great workshop. It was awesome to meet the players and, and the coaches there. Uh, and I encourage you to look into this, whether you're a coach or a student. Uh, we have two podcast episodes actually with them on the Golf Science Lab, How Good Golfers Get Good at Golf and Constraint-Based Coaching. Highly recommend checking those out so you can kind of learn a little bit more behind this about why they do what they do. I think constraint-based coaching is something that every person needs to look into and needs to incorporate into their learning environment. Uh, and every coach needs to realize that the environment they create has a really big impact on the players that they turn out. So looking at this method and maybe changing the way that you do things is, is something that, that everyone needs to do. Uh, those two podcast episodes, uh, reach out to Graham and Peter. They're, they're always, uh, they are so willing to share. It, it's fantastic. So I really enjoyed it. Thanks so much for having me out, guys. Uh, make sure to check out what they're up to.